We're so glad to have you on the show here. I know we're just a few days removed from, you know, the national championship game, but have you already moved on to baseball? I mean, spring is in the air, the crack of the bat. Have you have you already moved on and, and eating popcorn and hot dogs at the ballpark? Or are we still lingering on this title that was? And no, I'm actually sitting here in Virginia getting ready to do a, an event for the V Foundation uh, with Gary Williams and uh, Tom McMillan uh, to raise money for the V Foundation. So, uh, no, I mean, I love the Yankees. I'm a big Yankee fan, but uh, that was a heck of a NCAA tournament and obviously a, a great, great championship game. It really was. And uh, Kansas comes out on top. They uh, furiously come back from 15 down at halftime to knock off uh, the North Carolina Tar Heels. Just kind of your overall takeaways from Kansas in this tournament. I mean, I thought David McCormick probably should have been the uh, the final four MVP, just the, the, the way he changed the game, especially against um, in the previous game uh, in the final four there against Villanova. So uh, McCormick was so huge for them. He was able to kind of negate Baycott in the second half of the national championship game. But overall, Kansas was it a bit of an easy road did they have a couple of things go their way with some injuries and some top seeds going hey you play who you play no excuse no uh you know take nothing away from Kansas they they did it and just kind of want to get your takeaway from them as a whole in this tournament well I think they earned it I mean last time yeah. I checked you, you earned a national championship and yes sir obviously David was terrific in the semifinal game but he was also terrific in the championship game those back-to-back buckets at the end of that game were spectacular but uh you know you look what happened in miami coming back at halftime it was like deja vu in the championship game uh whatever bill decided to do at the beginning of the second half in both games was uh spectacular defensively they did a terrific job of, of creating turnovers i think they had 14 points off turnovers and 24 points in the paint in the second half i mean uh giving christian brown a chance to post up in, in a matchup uh, that was advantageous to them and then obviously getting out of ahead of the defense. Uh, you know, a big thing was in the first half they were playing against Carolina set defense because they couldn't get a stop. Second mm-hmm. half they got stops, created turnovers, and now when you're playing ahead of the defense, you know, it's a little bit different. And that's exactly what, what happened. But the resilience of the resiliency of that team, I think the two or three un you know underappreciated players, obviously Christian Brown is one yep. of them. I think Wilson was one of them just in terms of his overall floor game. And David, I thought David was terrific. Uh, second half of the season, you could see the light bulb go on. But more importantly, his positivity and, and the way he carried himself and his energy and uh, was absolutely phenomenal. So I know Remy gets a lot of credit. I know Chai gets a lot of credit. But they were a really good basketball team that everyone kind of em- embraced and championed their roles. And, and that's why they won the national championship. Yeah, and Coach, this doesn't speak to the current players of Kansas, but uh, the Jayhawks do have five level one violations. Uh, It's kind of looming there. The decision could be coming. Uh, We've probably been saying that for near a thousand days, but it seems like maybe it could finally be coming for them. Uh, We've got a report here that says the program committed egregious and severe violations that significantly undermine and threaten the NCAA collegiate model. Bill Self and assistant coach Curtis Townsend embrace, welcomed, and encouraged this activity. Am I just being a curmudgeon? Should we not focus on this? It wasn't focused in the telecast or anything, but Bill Self and this program may have some questions to answer very soon. Yeah, I don't think you should focus on it because you have no control of it. Control your controllables. Uh, what you can focus on is obviously a tremendous season. This group of players, a different type of uh, Kansas team, not loaded with McDonald's All-Americans. I mean, David, mm-hmm. I think, was the only McDonald's All-American, and and, and I think it was 27th in the country. Um, which I was a, a three-star player. Christian Brown was a, a, a top 100, but he was a four-star. Actually, he was outside the top 100. Uh So if you look at the makeup of that team, it really was a team that sacrificed for each other. But, you know, look, the reality is eventually they're going to have to deal with whatever happens uh, in regards to uh, the NCAA. uh, But I'm not going to speculate on it because I haven't read all the thousands and thousands of pages that uh, (laughs) encompass the violations. Those words are strong. I mean, you know, look, you can't ignore it. Uh, If you're a Kansas fan, you feel like you're getting picked on. If you're not a Kansas fan, you feel like you know you hear those those accusations and they're they're, they're they have great power in in the words. So uh, you know I think that you know if you're a Kansas fan you're really excited about what you were able to accomplish this year with a, a unique Kansas team, but uh, you have no control of what's going to happen with the NCAA uh, except that you probably will have an appeal after it finally comes down. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, maybe a thousand more pages in a thousand more days. You know, I during quarantine, I had time to read the Bible and all those thousand pages, Coach. So I'm well read on all this. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, I want to switch kind of focus to a team that I find so interesting here as we cover the SEC, and that's Arkansas. I mean, you look at the two five stars they've signed in Jordan Walsh and Nick Smith coming into this year, and then, uh, you know, God, they just got a commit from Anthony Black. They just had a transfer from Arizona State today. They had the two twins transfer just in this week. I mean, just talk about what you know know about Eric Musselman and how he's kind of building things in Arkansas. I mean, talk about a team that may come out on the forefront next year and be a favorite to go to the final four. I mean, two back-to-back elite eights, Eric Musselman really building something there in Arkansas. Yeah. Eric's done a great job. He's found a good balance between recruiting high level freshmen. And then obviously he's always done a great job in the transfer portal. And, uh, you know, yeah, they've become a destination for elite, you know, transfers. Now I'm not as big on the twins and two kids that transferred from Rhode Island. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm into winning players. I'm not sure those guys have won anything, uh, but uh, Eric does a great job of getting guys to buy into roles, uh, play to their strengths, uh, understand what the goal is is to to win, and that everyone you know benefits from that. So he's done a phenomenal job. He's a you know terrific communicator, a terrific coach. Uh, those guys play for him, believe in him, trust him. He's done a great job marketing their program. The energy, obviously, Bud Walton's as good as any in the country. So uh, they've got it going on. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, and I think uh, Clint asked that question to twist the knife a little bit. Uh, Gonzaga fans sitting over here. Uh, we had a tough time with Arkansas. Couldn't hit open shots. Uh, the refs made a few questionable calls, but it was definitely in Gonzaga's hands as they missed open shot after open shot. And I want to ask you, with Drew Timmy now leaving, of course, Chet Holmgren probably on his way out as well. We haven't heard anything official on that yet, but uh, what does Gonzaga need to do? And Mark, few they lose uh, Tommy Lloyd. Uh, he goes to Arizona, coach of the year. And it seems like whenever they run into these athletic, physical, high motor teams, uh, they did it against Baylor last year. They've done it against Arkansas here. And it seems like every year, if they run into those teams, they had a tough time with Memphis this year. Does Mark Few need to change his recruiting process and try to get those big, physical, athletic guards and big men, just players in general? Last time I checked, they're knocking on the door every single year. Last time I checked, they played <laughs> two championship games. Last time I've checked, I think they have more NCAA tournament wins than almost anyone in college basketball. So, yeah, you know, obviously the guards, Baylor's guards were really, really special, pushed them out. And I thought that, uh, you know, in their in their in their loss, obviously to Arkansas, Arkansas got up and underneath them and was disruptive. But I'd say continue to do what you're doing, continue to knock on the door. I heard the same thing said about Jay Wright and his teams. Yeah, and I, it worked out pretty good for Jay, I think. I think it has, yes. <laughs> Well, Coach, I want to ask you about a team that we cover here very closely, uh, the Missouri Tigers, of course, a team that hasn't been much a part of the NCAA tournament conversation over the last uh, few years. Uh, Conzo Martin got there twice in his five-year stint, but Dennis Gates comes over from Cleveland State, a hire that maybe Missouri fans were a little questionable about uh, at, at the onset, but you know, all of a sudden here, you know, you sign a four star and uh, in Aiden Shaw and uh, you're able to lure a, a major assistant away from Florida State and, and things are looking up that this M Missouri situation, this is a program that's just been so downtrodden for so long and it's been one bad decision after another. Hire is not working out. Uh, what do you know about Dennis Gates? He's coming in here. He rebuilt the Cleveland State program in a very short order. Can he do the same at Missouri? And and kind of what is uh, the ceiling for him uh, here uh, as he comes to Columbia? It's going to be a process. Now you can do it a little quicker with the transfer portal, but uh, it comes from great pedigree. Obviously, I'm, I have so much respect for Leonard Hamilton. Uh, yeah. Charlton Young is a dear friend. Is yes. I, I, I really have another guy, a lot of respect for his work ethic, his connections. But Missouri is a different place to recruit to. I mean, those guys have done it mostly uh, in, you know, in, in the South and then internationally with, you know, finding all those big guys, you know, and in Georgia and Florida and, and neighboring states. So, uh, you know, first you got to, obviously, you've got to get back to zero. And what I mean by that is, you, you know, you've got to get, bring some stability and, you know, create a winning culture, winning identity. Now, I think Guns have created a great, great culture. I'm a big, I'm a big Guns of Martin fan. I mean, he, you know, he'd take shortcuts. You know, he wasn't going to compromise his values. Now you don't have to worry about compromising your values because you can do basically whatever you want with NIL. I mean, it's, you know, it's incredible. So uh, it really comes down to acquiring talent. You got to get good players, but you know, in that league, you're going to have to leapfrog a lot, a lot, a lot of good programs. The positive is there are six new coaches in that conference. You know, you know five of you 
include Mike White, you know, staying in the conference. And uh, it's not like, and I know people don't want to hear this, Kentucky's not going anywhere. Kansas learned that at, at Fog Island Fieldhouse. So uh, Kentucky's not going to disappear. And obviously Alabama's continued to, you know, obviously recruit at a high level. Arkansas is recruiting at a high level. Um, it's a tough league. And uh, I think people need to be patient. But you need to have some type of foundation. The quick fix at places like that don't work. Uh, you got to have some type of stability or you can have one good year and you're going to go, you know, obviously back to right, right back where you were. So I wouldn't re- recommend a, a quick fix. I'd recommend building it obviously with guys that want to be part of the renaissance of Missouri basketball. Yeah, absolutely. And Missouri kind of tried a quick fix um, and it, not to place that on Conzo Martin, but all of a sudden it's, you know, the Porter brothers and it's a top five recruiting class, Jeremiah Tillman, and here we go. And then as that kind of fell apart, it was kind of hard to pick up the pieces. So we'll see uh, how, where this is headed. I want to kind of talk about the final four this year. The numbers, uh, the the, the uh, ratings are up 4% over last year's national championship between Baylor and Gonzaga, over 18 and a half million viewers average here in this final four. But man, as I look around, you know, I think about, you know, I'm 38 years old coach. I grew up with just huge coaches, huge personalities. You know, coach K just coached his last game. There was huge storylines there. You think about the Norm Stewart's that I grew up with, uh, the Seth Greenberg's that I grew up with, guys like, uh, you know, Denny Crum and, and Roy Williams, who's now retired. So college basketball is almost having to find itself all over again as some of these legacy coaches are, are moving out. Man, what, you know, how do you see college basketball just sort of where the personalities and the storylines are going to come from? Or are we just going to be constantly using the term NIL transfer portal now until uh, in the foreseeable future? Well, that's not going anywhere. Right. You know, transfer portal is not of going course. anywhere and NIL is not going anywhere. So that's going to be part of the new culture of college basketball. That's just the way it is. It's not changing. Uh, in terms of personalities, you know, coaches will emerge, and there's no doubt about it. But you've still got a, you know, a, a, a group of coaches that aren't going to. Bill Self's not going anywhere. John Cal Perry's not going anywhere. Uh, you know, that's for sure. But you, you're going to have coaches emerge, uh, the next generation of coaches. Uh, who those guys will be that will really separate themselves, I'm not sure. Uh, obviously, John Shires had great recruiting classes, and uh, and that's a good thing for for Duke. But you know, in the end. You can have great recruiting classes. You've got to go and you've got to, you know, you got to go coach them. And there's, you know, there's a big difference in acquiring talent and then obviously putting those guys when you face adversity having success. So uh, I think our game's in great, great shape. Look, it was great. We had it. We had a COVID year. We had no tournament last year. We had a tournament with a great champion in a sterile environment this year. Obviously, the energy, the passion, the ownership. Uh, was was back in college basketball and you know i had been to 41 consecutive final fours before covid so it was great to have it back i don't think it's going anywhere i think there are a lot of good things that are surrounding our games i think that you know maybe nil will have guys stick around a little bit longer which is very positive uh but uh and and yeah and guys got to coach their teams and if if they recruit through the nil and not get guys that actually want to be there for all the right reasons because they believe in the program they believe in a the coach they want to be at that school they want to get better they want to allow themselves to be coached if it all it becomes such a business that it's it's more about that and not about making a decision that's in their best interest in terms of not for four years but for 40 years not for two years but for 30 years then uh, you know our game will not be in a good shape a good place yeah, very true, Coach. And uh, Clint mentioned Coach K there. I mean, he coached his last game in the Final Four there against North Carolina. A little bit of a tough way to go out against your rival there in North Carolina, but it was a great game. One that's going to go down in the ages, maybe one of the best Final Four games of all time. And Coach K, stepping away, I kind of want to get your thoughts on what he meant to college basketball and what we're losing now that he is stepping away. Well, we're not going to see another one uh, because, I mean, it was 42, 43 years or at the yeah. same institution. That's not happening again. It's just not. I mean, the, guys, the guy from Army is not getting the Duke job, and <laughs> he's not going to be there that, that long a period of time. So, I mean, uh, you know, what we're losing is, a, you know, an icon, a guy that set a standard uh, for how hard your team plays and how consistent you could be. I mean, you got to remember now, they were the biggest game on everyone's schedule, and yet every single night they came to play. Uh, obviously he changed with the times and showed agility that you need to adjust to the times, whether it was one and done, whether it was using the Olympic uh, experience to assist him in, in recruiting, whether it was using the Olympic learning from the 
players that played the Olympics on how to really motivate and coach elite players. The greatest thing Coach K did was uh, was he was a great motivator. He's a, he's just an elite elite motivator, and and he has the ability to touch and connect and and get players to trust each other, trust him, and trust playing winning basketball and playing for each other, and and, and that's what will be missed along with obviously. You know, let's face it, when you've had the success he had, he set a standard in, uh, in terms of how you run a program. So uh, he'll be missed, but, you know, so was John Wooden, so was, you know, Roy Williams, and so were all the other great icon coaches that had such a great impact on our game. Well, Coach, before we let you go, when you talked about uh, the event that you're going to be a part of, it just it rang a bell because we had just hung out with Joe Theismann at the Super Bowl uh, Radio Row, and Joe, Joe Theismann is hosting this uh, Virginia Vine Benefit for V Foundation. Uh, what a great guy. I don't know how well you know Joe, but my goodness, one of our favorite people, someone that we are around quite often. So this is a tremendous event. It's three days, uh, goes through the weekend and just kind of tell us a little more about that and what, uh, how people can maybe get involved as far as maybe, you know, donating another V foundation.com. Well, you, uh, go to, you go to V, v, v foundation, yep. uh, you know, I'm, I'm basically leading a symposium on, uh, with, like I said, Tom and Gary Williams, and I think Michael Wilbon on, uh, just V and, and, um, uh, you know, how cancer has impacted everyone's life, obviously somewhere yeah. or another. And, Reminiscing back to uh, the great 73-74 NC State Maryland games, probably Tom won't want to hear that. <laughs> Gary, Ga- Gary would rather hear about you know the championship ga- championships he won and uh, the two Final Fours that he yeah. he was involved with. But uh, you know it, it's a it, you know it, it's a great event uh, to help raise money for an incredible cause. So uh, I'm really excited about it. Oh, well, tremendous. Uh, thanks so much for your tremendous coverage all basketball season long. It's when it, when a season ends, it always takes a minute to sort of look back and, you know, put it behind you and, and move on to the next thing. I'm, I'm one that I kind of like to marinate on something. I don't like to just move on quickly. It's baseball season now. No, we got to really take in what, how great this tournament was and how great the season was and how great a job you and all, you know, of your colleagues do on ESPN. Seth, thanks so much for joining us as always. We'll uh, hopefully catch up uh, maybe next November as we get the season going again, my friend. You got it, guys. You be, you be safe and, uh, and have a great summer. You bet. You too. You do, Coach. You're the best. It's always Thank an you. honor. Take care. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.